If you happen to live in Lake Jackson, Texas, where the main streets go this way and that way, then your congressman is Ron Paul. And he's a presidential candidate, GOP ticket, and he's on the line with us right now. Congressman Paul, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Are you impressed that I knew about this way and that way? I, I was wondering how in the world did he know about that? Uh, relatives. It's a, it's a weird town for the names of their streets, that's one thing. It is that. Uh, relatives living in Lake Jackson, Texas. Wow. Okay. So, uh, so I have been there uh, many times. So oh, we finally meet, huh? That is wonderful that we can. <laughs> So but, I, I've heard you speak at some of the conventions. I think it was a libertarian convention a while back, but I guess we didn't really meet at that time. No, they don't. They don't. They don't particularly like me anymore, and it's basically because, uh, well, it would be the main if, uh, d- uh, issue on which you and I might differ, and that would be in the area of uh, foreign relations, foreign affairs. But you're you're the member of the committee, and you're the candidate. My opinions don't matter. <laughs> but I, I need to ask you right now, right off the bat, because we agree on so much. You want an end to the IRS. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm wondering, though, if I might be more libertarian than you. Let me ask you one question. Mm-hmm. Okay. Should, if an individual, since you're a physician, and a flight surgeon, too, by the way, right. or were, uh, since uh, when an individual needs a doctor, should they be restricted to choosing a provider of medical services who has been licensed by the state, or should that just basically be their choice? I think it should be their choice. I, I think freedom of choice. I think we have way too much licensing. Milton Friedman was excellent on this. He didn't believe like licensing tend to protect certain groups uh, in competition. You know, why do you have to have licensed plumbers and electricians? It's all to protect some group, and I think medicine is that way, too. So I argue the case for freedom of choice in alternative care and that uh, states should have minimum licensing, and some could argue that we probably don't need any. Well, I would go just, you know, if, if you want to be sure about your doctor, look for private accreditation behind his name. Right. Look for those initials. You don't need the government to tell you. And they cannot commit fraud. They can't say they're an MD if they're not an MD. And if they use uh, any kind of procedures that can be harmful, they have to be totally liable. And, and there would probably be private sources that uh, would uh, would give you information uh, better than the government. The government sometimes protect uh, bad actors. Yeah, and and I'm a lawyer, so I feel the same way about lawyers too. Let let <laughs> uh, let the people go for a private accreditation. But let's get off of that. Uh, I do want to ask you about uh, foreign relations because I know this sounds trite, but the world is getting smaller. We have this situation with Pakistan. I can just say this. I'm glad I'm not the one that has to figure that out. Mm-hmm. We have a nation of Pakistan right now that, that seems to despise us. We give them well over a billion, maybe a couple of billion dollars a year. And they have nuclear weapons that we would just as soon not see fall into the hands of Islamic terrorists. You're on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Right. If you're president, that's a tricky situation. Congressman, how do you handle that? Well, I think uh, the way we've handled Soviets is a pretty good example. You know, they had a ton of them, and a lot of them floated around. I'm not sure they can identify every single one of them right now. But they they had to deal with that, and that was a very dangerous situation. When I was a flight surgeon, that was in the 60s, and it was quite dangerous. As a matter of fact, I was drafted while the weapons, the uh, nuclear weapons, were put in Cuba. So I, I, Kennedy, I thought, set a pretty good example. Is uh, he he uh, you know had to deal with it, but he and he and Khrushchev got on the phone, and they both agreed to uh, withdrawing weapons. We actually backed off from putting our weapons on their borders in Turkey, and then they took them out of Cuba. I, I think it should be dealt more in that manner rather than saying, well, we have to invade them and take them over. I think I think that's when we get into trouble because. I think the Pakistan, I use that as an example of the chaotic foreign policy that we have, because uh, at one time we're dropping uh, bombs on uh, on people there that we think are the bad people, and a lot of innocent people die, and they get very angry at us. And then we send money to the government, and then the people get mad at their government, they get mad at us. It's so chaotic. I mean, we, we have to make up our minds one way or the other. Now, uh... 
your campaign, I've, I've watched your campaigns several times. Even as a libertarian candidate for president, you ran, what was it, 90, when was it? 88. 88. 88. But this time, more than any previous time, uh, you, are, you are gaining traction with the American people. Is it because of the number of debates that you have participated in? Or is it because Ron Paul now has a message that is ringing even more true with the people of this country? I think, I think it's the second. I don't give myself a whole lot of credit for giving any grand speeches, but I think it's a grand message. And the message is great, but the disaster is staring us in the face. Uh, financially, you know, I, I first ran for Congress in the 70s over the financial issues and the gold standard and why I predicted and thought that government wouldn't be totally out of control if there's no restraints on printing money. So this has all come about, and we are uh, facing our bankruptcy, although too many in Washington won't admit it. So that financial crisis is there. But even on this issue that you say that you and I probably have some disagreements, people are sort of tired of, you know, (laughs) Afghanistan 10 years. This is why I argue the case, you know, for the Constitution, if you have to go to war, you declare them, you win them, and get them over with. So I think the frustration with the war uh, the deficit we're facing, the financial crisis, and I think the fact that I've offered in a very serious manner to cut the budget a trillion dollars. If, if, if it's a problem, that's what you have to do. But nobody, the other candidates haven't offered any real cuts. Nobody in Washington uh, is, is talking about real cuts. They're talking about cutting proposed increases, right. and that's quite different from well, what I've been talking about. That message is totally lost on the American people. Uh, that all they're talking about is, well, we'll slow down our spending increases a little yeah. bit. And if the, I think if the American people understood that, uh, there would be a lot more haywire thrown into the, uh, into the uh, presidential election than there is right now. But don't you think the major media have a lot to do with this? Because they never pointed out, when, when they talk about a cut, whether it's an entitlement or an overseas expenditure, they always talk about it as a real cut. They never explain this. So that's why it's so difficult for us to get that message out. Well, but, but I, the American people know there's something seriously wrong. Though. Well, I, I think the major media, the Obama media in this country, is absolutely dedicated to the proposition of re-electing Barack Obama as president of the United States. Yeah, they put him know. there. They're embarrassed by him but they want to make sure he stays. I think you're right about that. So now, the financial situation in Europe. We talk about Pakistan. That's military. That's nation, that, that is a, a physical threat. The euro may be caving in right now. Some people are suggesting, uh, you know, it's just a matter of time before the United States steps in there to bail those people out. If Ron Paul is the president... Uh, certainly we don't want to see a catastrophic economic disaster in Europe, but what do we do? Well, you have to face the reality, and the reality is countries like Greece are bankrupt, and they should go bankrupt. They should liquidate that debt and clear the board. But to keep propping them up, but, but we can't blame the Europeans for doing it because we do the same thing over here. Look at our TARP funds as well as allowing our Fed to create $15 trillion, and they've already been very much involved in Europe, and Bernanke has already just recently announced he would be available if, if, the, you know, if it becomes necessary for us to even inject more funds. But I think the whole system is doomed, whether it's the euro, or the European Union, as well as our dollar, it's just a matter of time. Uh, it, we, we could work our way out of it. The odds are slim. That is, we'd have to cut a trillion dollars and quit printing money, uh, and we'd have to back off on, on our spending. But what happens if we don't? I, I think it's going to be catastrophic. I think it's going to be a destruction of the currency. We have the biggest bubble uh, existing ever, ever in the history of the world. And uh, all the currencies are connected. We do have a type of negative globalism. It's globalism, but it's all fake. It's built on debt. And that will come up, that will come apart. And, and people will leave currencies. They're leaving other currencies, and the euro is under threat. But eventually they're going to leave uh, the whole dollar standard. The dollar is the reserve standard. And uh, most people who are serious about this, whether they want the U.N. to establish a new currency or whether it's some of us who would like to see a gold standard, uh, I think we're, many people are very much aware that the dollar standard is destined to end. It's just a matter of time and how chaotic it's going to be and what it's going to be replaced by. I'm talking about destiny. Maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I came upon a video of 
a uh, somewhat younger by maybe nine years, uh, Ron Paul on the floor of the House of Representatives warning that if we didn't do something about Fannie and May, we were headed to a real estate meltdown in the United States. So uh, you and Gene Dixon, how did uh, how did you figure that one out? <laughs> well, I, I think I cheated by following Austrian economics and following and reading and studying a lot of people that are a lot smarter than I am who, who explained the business cycle, and that was the motivation, of course, for me to get involved in the 70s because uh, this, this was expected to happen. And uh, the meltdown, of course, uh, sort of has come, but it hasn't allowed to be uh, to go its full course. It's always it's just being delayed. So the fact that they were able to patch it together, you know, eight and oh nine by the creation of all this credit, they never have allowed the total meltdown or the correction that is necessary. So this is going to be prolongation. If they'd have allowed it to really uh, liquidate that debt in 08 and 09, it'd been over with and we'd be back to growth again. But we're doing like what Japan has done, and they've been in the doldrums for 20 years. We did it in the Depression. We wouldn't allow the corrections to occur. And we're doing the same thing. So uh, you can't correct the problem of too much spending and debt and inflation by spending more, printing more, and regulating more and taxing more. It just won't work. And I, it baffles me that people don't understand this because it, it isn't that complex. Now, uh, a colleague of yours for many years, Barney Frank, is not running for re-election. Uh, what's his legacy in regards to our real estate meltdown? Well, I, th- I think eventually his policy on housing it was in combination with the Federal Reserve uh, responsible for the housing bubble. Uh, the Fed had to be there to create easy credit, easy money, and free money, <clears throat> but it had to also be in combination with, with government programs that uh, mandated affirmative action to make banks give loans to people who couldn't afford them and shouldn't have had these loans. So it was a combination of two, and I think the history will show uh, what uh, the contribution of both. Two more quick questions. Number one, something about Ron Paul a big misconception or something the voters out there don't know? Well, I think I think all of us suffer, whether we call ourselves libertarians or conservatives, we suffer from the fact that uh, they claim we're uncaring. And uh, I think people who know me know that's not true, because I happen to believe that if you do care about people and you care about prosperity and un- and you want people to be employed, you have to believe in the marketplace. So it's a very, very... Uh, st- strong motivation on my part to be a humanitarian in the sense of helping people, but you can't do that with authoritarianism. You have to do it with more freedom. Now, are you going to be in New Hampshire? I will be there either late tonight or tomorrow. I'll be there Not, tomorrow for sure. I mean during primary time. During, pr- at, the, during the, at the New Hampshire uh, primary on Dece- uh, the January the 10th. Oh, sure. Okay. Oh, sure. I will be sitting once again at that little table with cute Belinda sitting there, and once again, we're going to ask you to sit down and talk with us, and this time you'll do it, won't you? You mean I have refused in the past? The last time you turned around and walked away. Oh, I don't, I don't recall that. Yeah, you told Belinda. I don't know what I, was on my mind. Yeah. Well, maybe I just wasn't attractive. You just told Belinda, I don't want to talk to him, and you turned around and walked away. Well, I You know what it was? That it, doesn't sound that doesn't sound like me, but uh, You know what I, it was? I, I it was that Texas A&M ring I was wearing. That Oh my. Well, I'll have to re <laughs> No, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not much into that. But I I do have a, a, a son and a daughter. One went to Texas, one to went to A&M, so I know all about the the little challenges yeah. there. <laughs> okay, well, we'll look forward to we'll talk to you before then, but we'll look forward to uh right. act, actually howdying and shaking hands in uh, New Hampshire. Uh thank you for having me on, Neil. Okay, Congressman Ron Paul, presidential candidate GOP will be back. 